Travis Bishop, who we had on the program a couple of months ago. He was headed down to North Carolina to help out with some folks that were affected by the hurricane. He's going to go down there and do some cooking, set up shop. He's back, and he's going to be headed down again soon with some turkeys. Travis, welcome back. Hey, good morning, everyone. When did you get back? We got back a couple weeks ago. Yeah. A couple weeks ago, and um, <clears throat> had a had a good trip. Uh, cut short due to some things that took place, and uh, a lot of people are asking, you know, what, what happened, and I've just been, I'll be honest, I'm just going to let God handle that one. What did you see when you went down there? Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I got to meet those West Virginia miners. That was very much a good timing. I was down at the bottom of Back Cave, um, Chimney Rock, and I got to meet this gentleman named Mark who owns a place called the Post Office, but it was his house. Mm -hmm. And uh, the right side of his home was washed away in the landslide, and the three-quarters of his home was still standing of the old post office that used to be there. Um, They had a little base camp set up. They had shower house and provisions that were dropped off donations if you will in the exposed part of the remaining concrete slab that was the only thing left of that side of the house and um, those West Virginia miners rolled up in there and it was pretty neat and he saw my hat he goes what's up hillbilly (laughs) I said what's up my brother you know so um, didn't know what they were there for I knew I saw the equipment but didn't uh, didn't know they were going to be tearing up making some roads man so that was pretty Pretty iconic to meet those guys. They got some work done, huh? Oh, buddy, they went to work, didn't they? Travis, um, yes, sir. you've had a long history of helping people that's in need. Yes. We've had the floods in the southwestern part of West Virginia. Yes, sir. And uh, so you have an opportunity to look at West Virginia and now North Carolina. Actually, Obviously, New Jersey was my first one. First, okay. In 2012. Sandy. Okay. Sandy. Mm-hmm. So there was a – obviously the difference in scale, but was the uh, uh, was the destruction comparable in these uh, – between West Virginia and North Carolina? Well, the first thing I want to say is I don't want to minimize any, any catastrophic events that we've seen, yeah. our group, if you will, because they're all on a very serious level. Um <clears throat> You could say, you look at New Jersey, we were in Red Bull Stadium where we set up our camp, if you will, and provided uh, resources to the electricians. But they have resources. They're in a big city. Lots of provisions, if you will, are immediately right there, if you will. Uh, Southern West Virginia, the demographic of it, the geographical location is remote. So you're hours from any kind of uh, immediate assistance, if you will. Um, South Carolina is very, or North Carolina is very similar in Back Cave. Um, you're an hour from town, if you will. And of course, with the destruction and the landslides and the debris, it inhibits you to even, even make it there within an hour. It's, it's, it was treacherous going in. Um, they cut just enough of the, of the road open of the trees that were landslided down the mountain, the boulders, there was boulders bigger than my truck, um, you know, just it's on another level. It really is. And a minim- I don't want to minimize West Virginia at all because it was very serious because, again, where it's located. But this is very similar, but it's on a, on a grander scale, if you will. Um, it's, it's beyond what you can grasp on the Internet. It's beyond that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, I don't know if ap- apocalyptic is the word, but. Mm. Whew, For those folks, it would be the word. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. They're in. I got a, you know, I made a post uh, not long after getting back about, you know, I'm just going to let God handle this situation. Uh, it was pretty bad, and um, it wasn't government at all. It was a, it was a person, and it was a couple, if you will, on the farm that we had the issue with. Um, but there is so much being delivered to that area in the immediate two-hour radius, if you will, around all the flood zones. There is an enormous amount of provisions being donated and. What I gather, again, from my perception of what I saw, I don't see how all this stuff's going to get to these all, all these people. Mm-hmm. There is so many places that are – and, again, Americans have kicked in from all over the country and provided, sacrificed, given, driven. I mean, they've driven from states away to come and help. And you obviously see in the news where FEMA's under fire with some things going on. Um, there's probably some truth in that. Um, but my point is – we have so much down there. They have so much down there. I don't see how it's all going to get to the flood victims. I just don't see. Can't, can't they airdrop it in? Well, I guess they could, but 
a helicopter is only able to carry so much. Mm-hmm. You know, for example, the you're place, saying the volume of stuff down the there volume, is so much. Oh, it's I abundant. See. It's abundant. You know, I went to two big drop offs. One on the mountain in back cave area, about 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 four miles up the mountain, three miles up the mountain. There was a church up there loaded with merchandise. We pulled in and they said, "What are you doing? We don't we don't we don't need anything. We have so much here." Mm-hmm. I was like, "Whoa!" And I walked through the bottom of the church, and every room there's 15 rooms down there, and they're stacked to the ceiling. That stuff's been there for three, four weeks. And then they have a parish hall up on the main parking lot. It's probably a 30 by 80, like pole barn style building, but turned into a nice kitchen hall, if you will. And it looks like Walmart in there. And there's stuff sitting outside under tarps. I mean, the one place in Morganton, West, in Morganton, not Morgantown, Morganton, North Carolina, we had to drop a huge amount of stuff off there. It was an electrical warehouse. They had 50 generators sitting in the back room, brand new, just sitting there. And I'm going, this place is massive, and they couldn't take any more. So the generosity has been abundant. Abun- overabundant, and it's good. It's good, but they had literally 100 pallets of water sitting out in the sun out back. Mm-hmm. It's going to be. It's not going to be any good yeah. because it's exposed to the sun. Sure. And I talked to the lady that was helping run it. There's another three tractor trailers full of water. So logistics, I learned so much about logistics and timing and transportation and manpower and money a lot of this a lot of your a lot of the american people who donated goods have not they didn't waste it they're going to be blessed for it but i hate to see it sitting around and getting thrown away basically but lessons learned mm-hmm. we've had the generosity of american people sure. demonstrated many 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 times mm-hmm. all the way from uh, katrina in louisiana to Absolutely. puerto rico mm-hmm. and uh and west virginia uh but have we learned the lesson of the distribution yet and is that, is that a lesson that we can learn that's what i take away yeah uh, bill that's what i take away um i said to a bunch of group the group of the, the group of people that we took down i said going forward the, the takeaway in my opinion is money put the money into an account that we can draw from immediately for these people meaning i went to the bottom of back cave and i met mark who owns that post office house it's his house and he need, you know, what's the best thing you could do for that guy give him some money he's going to rebuild his life you know you can only take so much and it took 15, 20 guys, trucks, trailers, and women that came along, and all that labor, all that time, all that gas, all that liability um, is not, it's not wasted. It's not in vain. But going forward, I think we're a lot wiser next time is to take some immediate provisions, yeah, take immediate provisions that gets them to next point. Okay. Yes, right. But I think the money is going to be the biggest thing that these people could use. Number one, when you take them these donations, where are they putting them? They don't have a house. <laughs> mm-hmm. They don't have a house. They don't have anywhere to put it. Okay. Um, they don't have a way to go get. They don't have a car. Okay. They don't have a means, if you will. Um, the the greatest thing that I've seen so far, in my opinion, is those tiny houses, the campers. They're getting them a a, a refuge, if you will, temporarily till they get to the next point of getting their land rebuilt. Okay. But I think if you give them money, yeah. they're going to take care of their family. Bill, before you yeah, don't sure. follow up, because I, yeah. I want to make sure I get yeah. this next part sure. in before we only have three minutes left. Yep. Uh, Thanksgiving. What are you doing Thanksgiving? I'm sorry. Yeah, we got off. Um, I'm leaving this Sunday. We are leaving this Sunday. Um, there's a handful of us going back down to Back Cave. Again, I learned that I want to go directly to the people. I want to get the money directly to the people. We have three or $4,000 left in the cash out of the 15, 16 we had. I want to give that gentleman. There's a gentleman down there, and I want to say this. It's amazing. I've got a picture of it. When I drove through Back Cave, it's real small, three or four houses. This guy's house, the back of his house is in the river, okay? But he's rebuilding. He had brand new lumber sitting out front. I love his tenacity. Mm. Never met him, never saw who it is. I don't even know if it's a guy, gal, family, whatever. But they're on my heart the entire time I've left that place. The rest of the money that we have, him and Mark are going to get it because they're, they're, he's got a sign on the front of his house that says, still here, still standing. Love that. Spirit. Absolutely. That's the American spirit. That's the, the 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 Appalachian folks. That's their mentality. They they will live and they will survive. Who made it through? So they're going to make overcome my, uh, uh, insurmountable odds. Are you grilling turkeys down there? We are taking turkey. We're taking turkey, ham, and mac and cheese. Do you need anything from the people listening or viewing? Uh, you know, we were blessed the last time, and I still have all that saved. 
So um, I would honestly take, if you want to donate, that's great. We would be able to get it to these people. Um, but I will take cash, and I mean that 100%. How do they bring it to you? Bring it to the restaurant at Mountaineer Meat Smokers in the Berkeley Plaza, um, 45 Monroe Street. But you know, folks that know me reach out to me. Um, we are leaving. I have a friend, a veteran friend, a military veteran friend, coming all the way from Connecticut. He's bringing another load of goods. Uh, we still have an entire trailer of brand new camping supplies that we're taking back down, and we're going to give it all to Mark and that crew. There's a gentleman named Jason Ward. If you can find him on social media, huge following. He's in Back Cave. He's in Swannanoa, and he's giving you daily updates of what's going on. Travis, you epitomize American cares. So my hat's off to you. Very good. Thank you, Bill. Mm-hmm. Appreciate that. But yeah, we're leaving Sunday morning early, coming back Wednesday. So I want to serve. I want us to serve two solid days of meals um, to give them some normalcy um, in these tough times. Yeah. Yeah. Do all these folks have a place to stay? Right now, they're living in tents, and that's you know that's what it's going on. Cold weather is happening. It's coming mm-hmm. right now. It's already cold. It's it's already down to the freezing temps, yeah. you know, 38, 50, 30, 35, whatever. Um, we're just going to we're just going to join them, <laughs> you know. So it's um, it's it's going to be years. I mean, years before this thing is whatever normal is or could be. It's going to be a long time. Again, Travis, how can people get donations to you, whether it's food or money? Sure. Um, right out in Berkeley Plaza at Mountaineer Meat Smokers, man. Appreciate it. Good to see you again. Oh, thank you guys for having us. Thank you, Travis. Yes, sir. Do. Yes, sir. Have a safe trip. Yeah, thanks, folks. Bye-bye. Travis thank Bishop, you. TB, at uh, 10 o'clock. Mr. Miller, good to see you again. Mr. Stubblefield. See you tomorrow. Indeed.